Hello, I'm pianist composer Matthew Shipp, and I am joined by bassist Michael Bissia. And today, our topic matter is going to be the reinterpretation of standards within a free jazz idiom or language. There's a lot of misconceptions about free jazz. A lot of people tend to think of it as just making things up in the moment based on an emotion or a feeling. And that does occur in the music sometimes. I mean, that's, there's a lot of misconceptions about the term improvisation um, in general, let alone within the language of free jazz. Nobody makes anything up out of, out of the air. There is magic and mystery that happens in music, but it's, it's, the magic happens because the artist usually has spent a lifetime with the language, and the more free they feel with the language and the more relaxed they are, and the more deep the language is within their subconscious mind, then things can happen, and you can kind of reinvent motifs within the time right now and do different things with them. As a free jazz musician, there are many ways of going about trying to make something up in the moment. And one thing I do is um, abstract on standards. The way I look at a standard is kind of like if, if a sculptor took a stone or a rock and they were trying to look for some form embedded in the rock and they keep digging deeper and deeper and deeper until they find some abstract form within the rock that ends up becoming their um, sculpture or their installation piece or whatever you want to call it. That's kind of how I approach a standard, that it's, it's language, it's material. So standards offer a kaleidoscope and a big block of material, harmonically, rhythmically, and melodically. And I, as a composer, improviser, am free to delve deeper and deeper into the material until I abstract it to a point where it might be something that you might not recognize as the original standard that it is, but I've found these other elements within it that work with my personality. Um, there's many ways of going about taking the source material and delving deeper and deeper into it until you find something different. The first thing as a pianist that p pianists often use is, you know, reharmonization, where you take the original chord changes and you by whatever logic necessary. I mean, there's textbook ways of going about reinterpretation of harmony, and there's non-textbook ways, meaning whatever works for you, using your taste, your intuition, your ear, and your natural talent, wherever it leads you, um, you know, that, that's how you reharmonize a tune. And often with new chord changes, the tune takes on a new character and becomes a different creation. I used to study with a teacher named Dennis Sandoli, and he was ta taught in Philadelphia. He was John Coltrane's teacher. And one of the devices he used in teaching was um, for his students on the fourth week of every month, it was called the D week, you would take a standard and you would take the first, say, six, I think it was eight bars, I can't remember, eight bars of the standard, and you would, re first of all, you would write a new melody for it. You would write a new set of chord changes apart from it, and then you would write a solo based on the new melody and the new chord changes, and you would continue at taking that standard for like, you know, the next few months until you recomposed the whole thing, wrote a solo over for the um, recomposition of, of, the, of the standard, and then also did a complete reharmonization of it. And then you would take that and further abstract it, and you would keep that process going until you created a whole new um, organism. And, that was kind of taking language and having it look back on itself, reflect on itself, mutate within itself. In other words, language being a live force that allows you to keep um, hierarchies of mutations going in to create something new. Within the language of bebop, a lot of things Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie, and those guys did were take older standards and kind of um, write their own tunes over them, you know, so basically they might take a standard and if they had reached anything in improvising over it that they thought was a profound melodic statement within itself, that might become the new melody for these old chord changes. And um, so th this, this idea of taking compositions and hierarchically putting something else, superimposing something else over that and keeping that process going until you have a new creation 
is not anything new at free jazz. That's kind of a way of, to keep the language moving and to keep trying to rediscover something fresh within whatever group of um, particulars you, you take as the premise for a new creation.